just a bloke in a bar. What is up, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Packer Up, boys. And it's time, baby. It's time. Oh, God, that noise. Oh, it's so good. It's still so good. Make sure to get in your local, grab a case of bloke beer, an absolutely beautiful, easy drinking lager. Uh, if they don't stock it, just go into your local independent and say, hey, do you stock bloke beer? If not, just ask them to order some in. They should be able to get a couple cases in. It's a beautiful, easy drinking beer, and it's a beer for blokes that turn up for family, mates, and good times. Aussie spirit in a can. We love rugby league. We are the beer of rugby league. Uh, Shandor isn't with us today. He's got work up in Brisbane, but obviously Maddie joins me as usual. How you going, brother? What is doing? What's it? It's me versus you tonight. Broncos, Broncos, Rabbitohs. Oh, I didn't even think of that. Yeah. Holy. Wow. Okay. It's, okay. Uh, yeah. It's funny how I remember when I first come on, when I first joined a few years ago and it was like the complete opposite. Every time we played, I was like, oh, we're going to pump them. And then actually, I'm pretty sure since we've, since I've started here, Broncos have beaten South more than South have beaten Broncos. I think so, yeah. Like, because yep. even in the grand final years or the year after the grand final, like, Broncos upset South a couple of times. You know, Re when Reynolds... I don't know if Reynolds has ever lost to us, to be honest. Mm. Um, so, yeah. Hopefully, we turn the tide tonight. Ooh, I mean, it's a, I think it's going to be a cracking match. Rabbitohs has been so much better than they have been in oh, the past. Oh, 100%. Yeah. I, I'm just... I'm, I'm very nervous about how the Broncos forward pack got dominated last week. Yeah. And that Broncos forward pack is better than the Rabbitohs forward pack. So, I'm... I'm nervous, but I'm very, very hopeful because they've shown some really good signs. Now, before we get into footy chat, mm. look, we used to start with some music before, well, not, not for very long, for about a month, yeah. a bit of music. Now, I have come across the biggest banger in the history of mankind. Okay. Like, I'm talking, this is an all-timer. So this is a song made, this is a song made by the, uh, sorry, funded mm. by the Irish government. Oh, and it is essentially a, a song, like kids are singing it, but it's a youth song about positivity in that. So wow. imagine like the government, the Australian government, getting young kids today to sing a song about positivity that they can get along with. You know, like we see it all the time, like where you're trying to engage the youth. Yep. They, these kids, they might be like, I don't know, 10 years old. So it's just like a fun song funded by the Irish government <laughs> and a bunch of young kids with a banger film clip but I want to show you what this song sounds like. You will not believe it. It's a banger. <laughs> it's so good, trust me. I'm not. I'm not lying. I was gonna. I was expecting some. Uh, what is it? World Youth Day Choir. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. That's a banger. It's, that that is like. That's like a top forty song. <laughs> <laughs> it's Rhyme Island, the Spark, and you can actually watch the film clip. And these kids are going hard. Like the charisma they have on camera yeah. is crazy. So go to YouTube, Rhyme Island, the Spark. Um, that, that just this was a pure algorithm feed. So I follow a guy called Fantano. He's, he's also known as the Needle Drop, mm. and basically he's a music critic. But he's known for being like super harsh. Anyway, yeah, he had a clip. He's, he essentially the same thing. He's like, I want to introduce you to the biggest banger I've ever heard, mm. and he showed this song. And yeah, that's and that you just heard the start of it. It goes way harder through the whole song. The lyrics are mad. It's all positive. It's all like uplifting stuff for young kids to be able to sing. Like, you know, as I said, engage the youth in cool, fun music, but with positive lyrics. You know, you get old when you start going, that's a good thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You said, you said the word youth like 16 times in it. <laughs> Mate, it, you, you know you get old when you see songs like that and you're going, yeah, yeah that's really good for young people to 100%. listen to good, positive lyrics yeah, about so believing in yourself. And it's, it's called The Spark. And the, the lyrics that they say, I found the spark. Mm. You, know, you can't stop it. That's what you want the young kids listening to. I'm genuinely keen to, to give that a Mate, watch. It's a finishes. banger. So the Irish government, absolutely. Yeah, that's, that's crazy. Just... What a song. What a song. And I mean, hopefully these kids re release more music. I hope so. That was a f I only listened to 10 seconds, but that was a banger. I'm telling you, you'll listen to it more often. At the moment, it's got 1.6 million views in three weeks. Oh, far out. And the comments are all like, this is an absolute slapper. Mm. Um, Did you say that was an algorithm fine? 
Yeah, or kind of. So yeah. I follow Fantano. Yep. I think I'm saying that right, Fantano. The needle drop. And he spoke about it. Right, gotcha. So, but I didn't search Fantano for it to come up. Yeah, yeah, it yeah. It came up in my feed. Because I remember, because I don't listen to any of that kind of music. Mm. But like, I remember when we did the show, what I mean, last year or early this year, when you, the boiler room stuff. This was this year. That was this year. This year, yeah. yeah. And I had to... Um, I had to find it and whatever. And I, my algorithm got pumped with Boiler Room for, for ages. I ended up watching the Fred again one, which was... Unbelievable. Un, like, I don't even like that stuff, but I was just like, I was like a zombie. I couldn't stop yeah. watching. It is weird, eh? Like, I'm, I'm the same. Before I got into the Boiler Room stuff, I was like, that's how is that enjoyable? Mm. But y y it's like you don't want to keep watching, but you can't look away. And, and I know, and you might be different. People might be different. I would, you, you will never catch me in one of those, ever. Like, oh, really? I, I hate that stuff okay but i i couldn't stop watching so yeah. i like watching it from a from a distance from a distance um i could go to one of those things maybe when i was a little bit younger i think mm. um, and i'm a big hip-hop r&b guy but i the thing that i like about that kind of music um is usually now don't get me wrong you find dickheads everywhere yeah. but usually in that environment everyone is so they might be naturally happy they might be they might have party enhancing situations <laughs> going on but usually the vibe is just about dancing yeah, having fun true. there's no drama when you sometimes you go to other clubs and bars the vibe is very like it's just a different vibe that's right it's that's right it's the same as festi like festivals not the crazy festivals like the not the festivals that i go to everyone's happy vibes usually it's like a happy yeah. vibe and that's what i like about i wouldn't listen to that song those that kind of music regularly but when you do go to it it's so enjoyable because the vibe is so good um also just a quick note j cole he's back Oh, so really? he released he released one of the look I didn't, look it was corny as but J Cole released a for all my hip hop hip hop heads out there he released a song called Grippy and the internet absolutely annihilated him and basically it's it's a it's a I wouldn't say like love song is too soft of a word it's a it's a sex song pretty much mm. in regards to like picking up a chick and hooking up and all that kind of stuff, which is fine. Like obviously that's a natural part of, but like J Cole never has really rapped. Yeah. If he's rapping about like that kind of stuff. It's more from a, a real love perspective mm. or a real perspective. Whereas he was rapping almost from like a, a fuck boy perspective yeah. in this one. He got annihilated this song. Like just, you know, after the beef with Kendrick and everything that, you know, he apologized where uh, People were expecting him to come out hard and be like, no, I'm still one of the best. Come out with this terrible song and everyone's going, what has happened to J. Cole? Obviously the same thing with Drake, but Drake hasn't redeemed himself. <laughs> but anyway, there's a singer called Thames and she is like a beautiful singer, like genuinely, you know, when you hear her voice, you know it's like one in a million voice you're hearing right now. And he put a feature on that. It is also a love song, but he did it from the J. Cole that we... Look, I don't mind artists subverting expectations. I do. I, I don't mind artists trying new things and having fun. I like that. Mm. But it doesn't mean that they're going to land it each time. That's what, When you make a risky song, it might not land. And the grippy one did not land. It was a risky song for him, did not land. This one, it's not necessarily a risky song for him, but it's, in, it's more in the love music kind of lane, but mature love music rather than young love music or whatever, or, or just like player love mm. music. And it's a great song. So J. Cole's back. Welcome back into the fold, Jake. When did it? When did it drop? Uh, a few days ago. A few oh, days ago. Yeah, I've completely missed it. Yeah. Um. So, he's back. Hip hop heads, don't worry. J Cole still got it. <laughs> I tell you what was so funny, when I can't remember if it was. I think it was on the Meet the Grahams. Well, yeah, when Meet the Grahams just and not like us come out. You go on YouTube, and all the top comments were like, J because because J Cole apologized and pretty much dodged an annihilation yeah. that Kendrick gave to Drake, and all the comments were like, J Cole is in a in a in a like riding down the street with his bicycle right now or he's he's like so happy running through a thing he's of carefree. flowers right now like like all the comments were just saying yeah. wow j cole absolutely and it was so funny and that's the thing he did he won because you don't want to be there's there's battling in hip-hop mm. and then there's what happened with the kendrick and jake thing that was like way past that you don't <laughs> want your name associated with any of that shit <laughs> I know. from both sides yeah but the problem is, is he came back with one of his, he came back with the worst verse of his career. Yeah. So all that goodwill that he had got mm. smashed where people go, oh my God, Kendrick's totally ruined this guy. Yeah. Um, but he's back. I, I do think that Kendrick, uh, sorry, I do think before that verse, that J. Cole did the smart thing of bowing out. For sure. Now, I wouldn't have apologized if I was J. Cole, um, but I, 
I think he could have got up on stage and basically been like, look, this is this is just not my vibe right now. I'm not not interested. For him to apologize, I was like, damn. Um, it was a lot. And at the time, I was like, what the f- what the hell is going on here? I understand where he's but, coming from, though. But now, yeah, same. But now I'm just like, maybe it was just the best option. No, but when when it was happening, even let's put aside what ended up coming out. Okay. Even when it was happening, I understand where he's coming from. It's like I'm I'm 38 years old. Mm. Like, I don't I don't want to be waking up every morning having to worry about all this negative energy, hating someone, them hating me. Like it it suck. It drains the life out of you when you're, especially as you get older. When you're younger, you do silly things, you get involved in that. And so I get where he's coming from. I guess the problem is for J Cole is like you can't spend the last three years telling everyone you're the goat, and mm. anyone that wants it can get it. And then the first time someone does go, let's go, you go, oh shit. So that was the biggest issue with everyone. But I understand why he was like, I don't want to be, I don't want to be in, like just in fighting. And so, yeah, I, he, eventually it was the right decision. Uh, I will say though, it's a really good lesson for like even Kendrick and Drake, sorry, no, Drake and Cole, if they had just not responded and just mm. gone on with their day, Yes, they would have took an L and everyone would be like, see, you're scared of Kendrick. But the L would have been nowhere near as big as the L that they ended up did taking. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes the best medicine is just going, not interested. Mm. You're the man, bro. And just keep walking. 100%. It's a good old just keep walking. Walk away. Just yeah. walk away from the fight. Anyway, so he's back. That's great to see J. Cole back. The fall off coming soon. Can't wait. Kendrick, there's a Kendrick album apparently coming. Oh, that gives me goosebumps. Obviously an Eminem album coming soon. I yeah. wonder how close they'll drop from each other because obviously... So Kendrick is on, I think he's on Aftermath, which is Shady's yep. record. Or like, it's a parent company maybe. I mean, she's with PG Lang now, so I don't know if that's changed. But they would be in talks with each other. They'd be chatting. So I yeah. wonder who comes first. It would probably be Eminem's album coming first. Yeah, I, I think so. I think there was a, look, I don't know how true this is. Apparently Billboard accidentally leaked so that it was going to be July 4 or something, the Eminem album. Um, oh really but like again who who knows who knows with any of that I saw, stuff i just got to check it now but i actually saw i think kanye west accidentally has leaked well not accidentally but he's leaked like all these songs onto his okay no it's not there anymore um <laughs> there, yeah there kanye. was a post saying that he's leaked like all of his like 40 songs onto his actual youtube oh um which is weird but, but yeah you're right that'd be they wouldn't be dropping anywhere near each other surely not surely not uh so yeah Eminem's back, J. Cole's back, Kendrick's back. What a time in music this year with everything that's gone on. And you were there in 2014 when they were all on the same stage, not at the same time, but yeah. uh, for the Rapture tour, which was just... Man. Was it 2014 <sighs> or 2015? It was 24... I remember, I remember everything. It was tw- February 22, 2014. Really? Yeah. So 2014, ANZ Stadium. Mm. It went Cole, Kendrick, Eminem. Oh, yep. The fact that I got to see those three all... What's weird is I, I more remember Cole and Eminem rather than Kendrick. Oh, really? Yeah. Yeah, right. Yeah, yeah. I, 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 look, I actually... Like, Kendrick, a massive... Like, you know, I know he's talented. Like, one of an artist of a generation. But I actually don't enjoy his music as much as probably Cole and Eminem. Now, I'm not a huge Cole fan, mm. but sonically, I probably vibe a little bit with more with Cole's music, even though I think Kendrick's more talented. Um, Interesting. In saying that, I did enjoy Kendrick's latest album, Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers, because I thought it took up like so much guts to basically make a, a an album about therapy and about mm. fixing yourself. Um, his song Father Time, mm. geez. If you've got a son or you know, you're close with your father or not close with your father or you've got issues with your father, go and listen to Father Time. It's mm. a friggin' unbelievable um, song about, you know, like trauma being passed on from generation to generation, not necessarily even trauma, but like your dad teaching you certain things. That's all he knew at the time. Like, you know, people that, like, I'm not going to speak for anyone else, but in, from, in my opinion, people that are too harsh on their parents don't understand that they came up in a way different generation. Like they, they were just doing the best that they could do with what they had. Now I'm not trying to excuse anything that was really bad. Like, but I'm just saying like, let's say they taught you some really conservative things in your head like you know men are supposed to be the, this way and women are supposed to be that way like they're just being that they didn't mean to teach you that like they just are teaching you what they were taught they didn't have the internet and they didn't have all of this information to learn off they're just doing the best they could with what they had and they had way less opportunities than us way less education than us like we are we are so much 
so far ahead of them in regards to access to information it's like not even close mm. and so it's a really good song about first of all identifying certain things where you go okay that probably you know now that we know more about this topic that's probably not the right way to go about things but i understand why my father said this or said that like there's a great line about the father kendrick says so he's far he, he says he recognized his father leaving for work the day after his um, mother died his father's mum so his grandma and his father responds to him like um, this life has no silver spoon and, he, and he's basically saying like his father wasn't in a position to take a day off to mourn because they had no money and so he would carry that trauma because he hasn't dealt with it properly but what was he supposed to do in that situation he, he had to feed the family and I think there's a lot of fathers that go through that. Mm. Um, you know, they wish they could take some time off or take care of their own mental health, but they can't. They're trying to provide for the family. Man, I remember being out in the, the above ground mines out in Maroola and like the amount of fathers that were either paying child support or in relationships that were working like 50, 60 hour jobs. And you'd say like, why do you work? Like, like put it, whenever the bosses would come out and say, we've got overtime, who wants it? The same guys every time be like, yep. And you'd ask them like, why do you do that? And when you hate, the, and these guys hated their mm. job. And they said, because I need to, I can't afford to pay like my child support or whatever. There's so many men and I'm only speaking for men. I'm sure there's like, you know, there's single mother situations and I know how hard it is for women. So I can, but I can only speak from my experience with men. There are hundreds of thousands of men out there at jobs they, abs uh, you know, maybe even millions at jobs they hate, but are purely there to provide for their family. Mm. Um, and, and, you know, what other option do they have? They don't have the cushy option of going, oh, you know what? Like, I'm feeling a bit down today. I'm not going to go into work and yeah. I'm going to work on me. You know, you see all of these, like, you see social media about, oh, know. you know, you need to do this, this, and you need to take time out to work on yourself. Man, the single mother that has like three kids, she's got to take it. She doesn't have time to friggin' meditate for 30 minutes a day. She doesn't have time to go and do ice baths and get to a gym. She has, can't afford the gym membership. The father that's working six, seven hours a week, they don't have time. Like they're, they're just struggling to pay their bills. Um, anyway, but again, that's what makes Kendrick so great. He, his art took us down that route. Yeah, correct. Make me think. I, I really, like pe people got to realise how, how talented Kendrick he's Lamar is. unbelievably like he's talented. He's crazily talented. Um, he, he's um, not to like harp on anymore, but like his latest album, I went to his concert, which would have been the end of 2022. And it was, what, it was probably the... Best choreographed concert I've ever been to. He's he's an actual artist. He's a legitimate artist. He's not yeah. a he's not a a product. Now mm. a lot of musicians today, pop musicians, are products. They're a business. Mm. They are there to create a product to be able to sell. Kendrick Lamar is making art mm. where he's yes, obviously it sells well. That's why the, you get the great crossover. But he's also trying to make you feel. He's trying to make you think. He's trying mm. to he's trying to tell stories. He's trying to. Um, you know, maybe help people if he can. You know, obviously, so yeah, Kendrick, as I said, he's not even really my cup of tea in regards to sonically sometimes. Mm. And yet I still appreciate how good he is. Um, but anyway. Anyway. <laughs> who gives a shit about what Denon's opinion is on such serious topics? As I said, guys, it's just like, I'm no professional. I, you know, I'm just some fucking idiot with a microphone. There's much, much more intelligent people on these topics I was just talking about that you should listen to over me. That's just a battler's opinion. Well, a person that has seen it himself you know obviously i'm fortunate to be where i'm at today but i've seen been there and seen people go through it so huge breaking news conor mcgregor is out of his fight with chandler oh i look i think with conor mcgregor i respect the fact that he was he's willing to get back in the cage and i i know he loves it like i know he loves it and and that's a good thing for sure but outside looking in you're just like why just just Mate, you made it. You made it, brother. Mm. You made it. Just right off into the sunset. Why do you want to get back in the ring, get brain trauma, injure your body? Like I understand that, you know, when you've got that fire inside you, no amount of money is going to be able to, I guess, replicate the fire of walking out, go mono and mono against another man across the ring from you and look at and knock it. Like nothing's going to replace that feeling. At the same time, I'm just like, I feel like Connor should just go, you know what? Right off into the sunset. The, the sunset, only... Brother reason i can give and i'm about to contradict myself is that maybe because his reputation's taken a bit of a battering maybe he just wants 
to like try and fix it or maybe he needs that ego boost. But then at the same time, I think, well, his actions make me think, think he doesn't so. give a shit. Yeah, I don't think he gives a shit. I don't think he sits there and goes, my reputation's in yeah. the toilet. Yeah, exactly Because there's right. a lot of people that still absolutely love Connor. Um, it's funny. I'm a bit like you. Like, I used to love Connor. And I, I know everyone listening to this, most people probably agree. And then he kind of got, he just got sick of him because he's, he acts like a bit of a, a Derek. He's not the same, he's not the same Connor that, he, the yeah. Connor that we saw rise to the step where he got to mm. is not the Connor we see today. Yeah. Like, you know, there was an under, there was a, uh, an ability to connect to Connor of like understanding he was from a very middle class or even lower class family. He'd battled his way to greatness. And then once he got to greatness, it's very hard to connect with Connor these days. Like, exactly. And, that, and that's the thing. People just want to be able to relate to people that they're watching yeah. and listening to. That's why Volkanovski is so loved. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Because he's still the Volks that we knew from before. Now, I'm mm. not sitting here. I'm not the kind of guy that's like, oh, you can't wrap yourself. You can't give yourself. You can't, like, you know, I enjoy that part of Connor of, like, you know, backing yourself in and talking yourself up. Like, it's part of the fight game. Mm. But I feel like somewhere along the line, he lost his charming like ability and became there was a bit of there was a lot of venom behind what he did exactly. like even he's he's world tour with aldo like even though he was fully in aldo's face all that kind of stuff you could tell that he had this deep seated respect for aldo like even though it was as hectic as it was when it was all said and done whereas i feel like these days there is a, a lot like there's venom when he fights and he talks about people and and then some of the stuff he's done out of the octagon it's like at some point, it's just like you just—you've gone from a, a a bit of a rogue, a likable rogue, yeah, to a person that does morally bad things. Yeah, and then that just—that just—that's got the whole world off, basically. He was the most loved person in the world at one point. Yeah, um, I mean, I, I, t I, t I tell you what, though, like even still, and I, again, I went off him big time, but I had June thirty set in the calendar. Me and all my mates, we'd planned because the Roosters are playing after Alliance. We planned sweet. Paynton, pub, watch Connor, footy. Like the whole, like people around the world were pumped to see this fight. Yeah, so it's, I, it's disappointing. People will, will are pumped to see him fight, but I, I don't think that, that doesn't like someone will go, well, you're still going to watch. You're still going to watch. Yeah, I'm still going to watch because I, I love MMA yes. and, you know, I'm, I'm always hoping the old Connor returns because yeah, I love yeah. that version of him. It doesn't change the fact that the stuff he's done over the last few years is not good. Like, 100%. So people go, oh, you're still going to watch, you're still going to watch. It's like, yeah, but his legacy is, is, the Conor McGregor legacy today is nowhere near the yeah. Conor McGregor legacy after he fought Eddie Alvarez and Floyd Mayweather. Even yeah. after he lost to Floyd Mayweather, his legacy was GOAT. Like people were putting him in the GOAT discussion. Mm. Like genuinely, is he the greatest mixed martial artist of all time? Now people that knew mixed martial arts were like, He's not even like he's hasn't defended his belt at 145, hasn't defended at 155. Like, he's not even close. But that's how big his legacy was. That that the the mainstream audience thought that. Now, you couldn't find any reasonable person that would have him even close to the greatest mm. mixed martial arts of all time. Like, and and that all comes with a mixture of things. It's a mixture of all the bad stuff he's done, so he's less likable. So you've got less reason to be biased towards him. But also because he's been so distracted outside the octagon his performance in the octagon have been nowhere near the level that he used to be mm. um so yeah i it is what it is i i definitely don't put it this way when he was on his rise if he lost i'll be devo like, i'll be like oh yeah. fuck, devastated um like for example the first time he lost to nate diaz i was just like oh man like i was so devo whereas if he lost today i wouldn't i couldn't give a shit yeah same couldn't care less. i was devo when he lost to floyd and even and I knew he was going to lose, yeah. but even still. We'll put it this way. I actually want Chandler to, to win. If, like, if they were to mm. fight, if they are going to fight, I actually want Chandler to win. I, look, I, I love a redemption story, but I just don't see Conor McGregor. I don't think he really has redeemed. He, let's say there's a redemption story and, and he goes in and wins. The part of me that loved him, the stuff outside the octagon, I don't think he's redeemed himself. I don't think he's fully oh, God, no. realized. I don't, and, and that's, look, it's his life. He can do whatever the fuck he wants. Like, if he feels he's got no issue, then sweet, like so be it. But the part of me that connected with him outside the ring, I feel like that's done. Like now, yeah. if he, if he, what I, it was so frustrating with with Connor was the first time that he came back to fight Dustin, you felt like he had redeemed himself. He was much calmer. He was very respectful to Dustin, and and everything was really well. He lost the fight, and then all of a sudden turned back into the I'm going back and I'm going to be 
the old Connor, but first of all, you can never recapture old magic. But second of all, the new the new the new Connor that was trying to be the old Connor, it wasn't the same. There was a mean, angry, yeah. aggressive tinge to it, a spiteful tinge to what he was saying. And we saw it when he did his leg and he was saying the things he said, like mm. just like far out. So Yep. Big, big loss for the UFC that he's in fighting. Been saying that I think the I think the UFC has almost been positioning Connor to move on from him for quite a while now. You know, people in MMA circles, at least some you know reputable journalists have have made the argument that that the UFC has almost put him out um, in the cold to a degree to try and move on with him because right. because they as an organisation they can't afford to just rely on Conor McGregor's star power and. They've proven, although the UFC is nowhere near in the hype that it was maybe three or four years ago, they have proven that they can move on to new stars. Oh, for sure. Um, for sure. And I'm, I'm such a casual UFC fan. Like, yeah. I don't really know anything, to be honest. But the major ones, I still, like, the last one, I was at a pub watching it. Like, a lot of people watch it. And, and that's what Colin McGregor obviously did that a few years ago, and he got me into it. But it, it's more than surviving without him. Yeah, they'll the survive, moment. but in saying that, like, because they've got such a big deal, I think, with ESPN and, and all that, they need to do more than survive. They need to right. keep growing and getting big. And there has been a, like, no one has come close to the pay-per-views. Oh, that Conor yeah, McGregor 100%. Has done. And so the argument is, is like, you know, if you keep him and you, you keep him active, then his star power stays as big. But if you freeze him out and you try to give other people the airtime that he would have gotten, hopefully you can build another star right. that can replace a Conor McGregor that's on the back end of his career because you know his star is slowly fading in regards to MMA you'll still be always one of the biggest stars in the world you know sport Um, so they need to find someone that can pick up that slack and become the next star coming through that can sell 1.5 million dollars 1.5 million pay-per-views or whatever Mm. and that's what's so interesting about boxing at the moment is that the Saudis have got involved there's even talks about the Saudis buying all the big promotions in boxing. And boxing is is almost having a renaissance period because the Saudis are throwing so much money at boxers to make the big fights happen. We're finally getting the big fights. Whereas MMA, the reason why UFC exploded the way it did is because the UFC, they control everything pretty much. They've got a monopoly on MMA. So they can force the best to fight the best. I don't give a shit about your record. I don't care if you lose your undefeated. You're, the best is fighting the best. We tell you what to do problem with boxing is is there's all these different promotions and for many years people would protect their records and so yeah. you wouldn't get the best fighting the best in the peak of their careers you get a situation like Manny Pacquiao Floyd Mayweather mm. who ended up fighting each other four or five years after their prime and ended up being an absolute dud of a fight yeah, I remember because that. they were way past their prime yeah um and so now with the Saudis involved with so much money and look you can I understand there are moral and ethical issues with that yep. I'm not talking about this, that, that side of things. I'm just talking purely boxing. It's a thing called sports wash, sports washing. There's documentaries about it about certain countries using sport to get a better standing in the world. But that's a separate issue. Just in regards to boxing, the the fights that they have been able to put on because they have got so much money has created a renaissance period for boxing where you know F- UFC and MMA are they're sweet. Like UFC is still sweet, but. UFC hasn't been any as exciting as boxing for the last 12 months, in my opinion. Mm. And so they need to find another star to be able to compete with boxing that has had this renaissance period. Now, if the Saudis do end up buying all those promotions, that's when MMA may be a little bit concerned because if you get one you know, top dog owning all the promotions in boxing, you'll have the same thing um, in boxing as you've had in MMA, the best fighting the best constantly. And the argument could be is like boxing has been around for so long that it's, you know, MMA is super exciting because you see knockouts all the time. So yep. that's, that's a benefit. But it is hard to understand from a casual perspective of what's going on. Like, you know, the ground game, the jiu-jitsu, the, the stand-up, the kickboxing, the, the Muay Thai, the, the just the striking. Like there's so many different facets of, a, facets of a MMA. A good example, like a, a very, very, very casual person like me, when I'm watching Islam last week or whenever it was, and it was just all wrestling. I was like, oh, this is so boring. But most most MMA, I'm sure MMA fans would have absolutely adored but the it. Main, but the mainstream, the, the wide audience they're trying to hit. Exactly, yeah. It is very hard to educate them on a- MMA because it's mixed martial arts. It is every single yeah. you know, combat um, style that you can put together. Whereas boxing, yes, you may not get the knockouts as regular, but it is very easy for the casual fan 
to go, I understand boxing. There's two dudes that can punch each other in the head. Now, granted, you're not going to understand the sweet science, which is called the sweet science, but it's very easy, very easy. And so that there's a reason why boxing has been around for as long as it has. And it's also, there's a reason why it survived, you know, almost a decade where people are going, is boxing going to die? It survived that period and there's, it's coming back because it's, there is something about, I think you'll find a lot of combat sports fans, they'll tell you a really good boxing fight is better than a really good MMA fight. But you often find there's more consistently you'll watch good MMA fights, whereas boxing can be very hit and miss. You can have mm-hmm. the most boring boxing fight ever, it goes for 12 rounds, whereas very rarely do you have a bad MMA fight. You do have them, obviously, but because there's so many ways to win and finish it, yeah. You, you, so you get good consistently, but in my humble opinion, nothing beats a great boxing fight. I was, just, gonna, I was about to ask, what, like, gun to head, what, what, what would you see, prefer? Okay, so more, more regularly, I like to watch MMA, UFC, yep. more regularly. So I'll watch that week in, week out, because as I said, that'll give you an 8 out of 10. Most cards give you an 8 out of 10. But... A big fight like a Tyson and Fury versus Usyk that has ebbs and flows and knockdowns. In my opinion, there's nothing better than that. They're just there's something about boxing that it is just so good to watch at the, at the actual peak of boxing. Um, but yeah. Anyway, uh, oh, the bloke in a bar sports bet multi. It is up. This is what we're doing this week. And there's actually a bunch of bloke in a bar multis from our show on Monday, but here's a specific one made just for you. It is the Battle of the Origin Centers. Latrell Mitchell, Stags, and Best, all to score any time. That'll get you 21 bucks. So go to Sportsbet, go to Feed, give me a follow, and you can just copy the bet straight away. That Plus, you can copy a bunch of other bets. Takes two seconds, and it's a bit of fun. We'll talk about it on Monday. You can also give Hammy a follow. Um, Hang on. Latrell, Stags, and Best, $21. Yeah, and all they've Jesus. got to score at any time. <laughs> That's I'm going to get on that. That's, That's because awesome. These ones are made uniquely for the bloke community. Right. That's why you get usually get really good odds. I, I just reckon, I'm not sure about best, but I'm just thinking about tonight's game. Latrell wants that Origin jersey. That's what I mean. And Staggs is up, like our edges are, like they're not going Stags very good. Staggs is a smoky for Origin. Like I know he hasn't yeah. been great, but he's definitely not out of the conversation. Yeah. Jeez. Like I know best is playing Penrith, but he wants that jersey as well. I like it. Yeah. Great. So 21 bucks. Get ya. So, um, yeah, head over to Sportsbet. Go to feed. Give it a copy. Give us a follow, guys. Takes you two seconds. Literally take you two seconds. And it's the best way for Sportsbet to measure how well the partnership's going. Um, and, you know, if we, don't, if we don't keep our partners happy, then obviously that, that hurts the podcast. So give us, support people that support us, guys. Uh, Dolphins defeat the Sharkies. What a weird game. Mm. I mean, definitely a game of two halves. Um, Dolphins came out, blow them out of the water. Sharkies... Fight back. Looks like, okay, the cream's going to rise to the crop. And then the hammer drops the hammer and just says, thanks for coming. He is absolutely, I cannot express how good he is. Like, I cannot express, because he's this unique mixture of, does he take as many runs as Dylan Edwards? No, he doesn't. But at the same time, he still gets, you wouldn't say he doesn't get through. Like, you wouldn't say that he's a lazy fullback, or you wouldn't say he's a fullback that takes barely any runs he's somewhere in the middle and so like you don't really appreciate how good he is until you sit down and think about how how many big moments this kid's had mm. like how many times in origin for example or how many times for the dolphins where he's done something incredible that you go hang on a sec like this guy is just if you want to explain game breaker he's a game breaker like he by himself from nothing whether it's origin for Australia, wherever it is, it doesn't matter how high the standard the game is, it doesn't matter what minute it is, it doesn't matter the pressure, it doesn't matter how good the opposition is, he can break a game open open, nearly better or arguably better than any player in the comp right now. Mm. It, it's, it's actually crazy and <laughs> he's so unique. Like you actually can't compare him to anyone. Yeah, because he's not like, he's not Edwards, doesn't take 30 yeah. runs. He's not doesn't have the low run count of like Latrell. Mm. Doesn't necessarily have the ball playing like Latrell. He's not necessarily Reese Walsh. Like he is a un- very very unique style of player at fullback, and he plays he plays his own style. Like he is truly like I tried to think about okay, what what who is he of this generation? And although he doesn't play like Greg Inglis, I do think the underlying ability where. 
GI all the time. He might be quiet for 60 minutes. Mm. And you go, oh, GI's been pretty quiet in the centres or, or wherever we end up playing. And then just boom, yep. GI just breaks the game open. And so although I know he doesn't run like GI, he doesn't like have the same body shape or whatever, when it comes to th- those two things, I think he is quite similar to GI where look at Origin. Look, look <laughs> at the impact he's had in Origin. That's what GI did in Origin. For sure. Yep, I, I I totally agree, and you're right. They're not alike. How like GI's a destructive ball runner, yep. hammer glides, like completely different. But in terms of big, mo- they, I reckon they have similar kind of output when it comes to you know they'll probably run for 150, 160 yep. meters game. Nothing like Edwards, nothing yep. like um, Inglis. Yeah, you're right. I, out of nothing, people forget the thing about Inglis. Like he. He did. He there were games where people were like, oh, he's not doing anything, blah blah. blah. But then you watch his highlights, and he, no one broke a game open more than Gi. Like, I, I don't think the amount of times Queensland were under the pump. Yep. And Gi would just do something incredible. Like he he's got eighteen Origin tries. Dar and not not disrespecting Darius, but Darius Boyd had a similar amount as well. And Inglis was a big reason for a lot of yep. those tries. Yep. So that's in state of origin. Like Hammer has eight tries in five games in mm. multiple positions. Oh, it's ridiculous. And he's not in an immortal error. Like he he's not playing off Cronk, Thurston, mm. Cam Smith. Like he's playing off DCE, don't get me wrong, he's incredible. He's had multiple halves pairing. He's had Dearden, he's had Munster, he's had DCE. Um, he's played in multiple positions. And not only has it been in attack where he's been a game breaker, but he shut blokes down in defense as well. Mm. Uh, he, as I said, like he doesn't play like GI physically. No, not at all. But when you're talking about an outside back that has on the origin stage just taken a game by the scruff of the neck and just gone bang. Like, look what he did this year. So three tries in game one. Last year, that try that he scored that Munster passed in the ball where he stepped inside Teddy, like, first of all, yes, it was brilliant what Munster did, for sure. He set the try up. Hammer still had plenty to do in that try. And there's an argument we made that try won them the series. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's it's crazy. I'm just trying to think about Greg Inglis as well. Like he, I think he debuted for Australia and Queensland before the age of 20. So their, their careers in that sense are kind of aligned because most people, when they go to the origin stage or go play international, it takes them a couple of da- a couple of games to like really kill it. But Inglis, he was, he was like that. Straight away. And Hammer's the same. Uh, it's actually crazy how, how good Hammer is at all levels like that. Pacific, I think Pacific Nations last year, or whether it was the World Cup the year before, I can't remember where he killed it. And it was, everyone just kind of rolled their eyes like, he's just doing it again. It's, yeah. I think it was the Pacific Championships last mm-hmm. year. He is, he is incredible. Yeah, it's, it's, it, crazy. It, it's so funny. And I, like, he was having a good game, but when he missed that thing on Kennedy, I actually thought, and like, you know, I don't like to broadcast, you know, wrong things that I say, but I, I actually thought, wow, um, I wonder if he would have missed that tackle in Origin. Maybe he's just better at Origin. Yeah. And then literally five minutes later, he scores probably the top, top five tries I've ever seen in my life. It's just crazy. Individual, sorry, solo tries I've seen in my life. And, and the timing of it too. Like they weren't up by 15 or no. 13 plus. Like the game was on the line. They're behind. And he just goes bang. I counted this morning. He beat like, and I'm not talking about ran pass. I'm talking about he beat six people, which is just ridiculous. And what's insane, so he has eight tries in five games in origin. Mm. Greg Inglis, 18 tries. Yeah. Hammer, 22 years old. <laughs> so he's basically guaranteed to break Greg Inglis's record. Mm. Um, he reminds me of, put it this way, if you've got Greg Inglis on this side and Steve Renoff on this side, I feel like he's like in the middle. Mm. Like he's got Steve Renoff's incredible gliding where it almost like looks like he's not touching the ground when he runs. He's just perfect gliding. But then he also has that, uh, he's, a, he's a probably a bit taller than Renoff and the, obviously the ability to play fullback as well, even though Renoff could play fullback, I reckon, but obviously he's a specialist centre. Yeah. He's like somewhere in the middle of those two. He is just so incredible. And 22 years old, basically like, let, let's say, let's say he plays Origin until he's 30. Let's be super conservative. Mm. So what's that? So eight more years, um, three games, eight times, what, you're looking at like, 22 games so he basically if he can just get 10 more tries in 22 games for origin he'll he'll be there which is like i'm backing him to score at least one more try this series just like insane he it's actually ridiculous how he's got eight tries in five games and, and sorry 24 24 games yeah yeah 
And like, and that's being conservative. Like, he could ha- he could have another three tries this series. Yeah, you just never know. Yeah. You just never know, especially with the the way the game opened up a bit, and like it seems like Origins are a little bit high, more high scoring. I'd love to know the the numbers on that. So look, the hammer was incredible, and look the Dolphins, man. Like I know that they ended up, you know, they're leading quite a few points in the second half, but like they're sitting fourth. It's crazy. <laughs> they're frigging fourth. It's cra- it's 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 crazy. And it's half what, the team's round fifteen. Yes, yeah, round fifteen this week. And half their team's missing. Half their forward pack, half like all their middles are basically. Their marquee signing is out for the season, and also the marquee signing from the year before is also out for the season. And they're both in the front row, pretty much. I know Gilbert can play back row, but it's just it is insane. So right now, thirteen games, twenty points. Uh, they are obviously sitting fourth. They are on the same points as Penrith. <laughs> what? It's just it's crazy. That it's, is insane. And I understand people like, yeah, I get it. Their draw is different to other people's draws. They're in their second year as an organisation yeah. here, guys. And they've had been smashed by injury and they got a 19-year-old halfback. Yeah, who plays like a freaking yep. 30-year-old. I'll tell you what, I feel sorry for Katoa. I mean, I don't feel sorry because he's so bloody good, but, geez, like, teams just go after him in defence. Yeah. Like, they just run at him all day long on the poor bloke. It's a baptism of fire for sure. I um, mean, it's probably the one area of his game that, like, it's going to take some time, but that's only natural for a half to, you know, no half comes in the complete package. Literally no half. Like, mm. you know, Andrew Johns, you know, he, he may have came in early and won premierships, but, like, he, he wasn't even the seven for the Blues for quite a while. Mm. We're talking about Joey Johns, so... People don't realise that. Like, and I sometimes forget as well, because for some reason I looked it up the other day. I can't remember why. I think he played more games at nine than at seven for the Blues. Also. For Australia. For, for Australia. Australia. I'm pretty I'm pretty sure. Or maybe at like a certain point of his career. But yeah, yeah so he debuted at Origin in 95, where he played two games. Both losses, by the way, against pretty much the 2020 equivalent of 1995 was Fatty's 3-0 team. And then he played hooker up until after he won the grand final in 1997. Crazy, That's yeah. crazy. He's the crazy. best. Pl- he's the best halfback of all time. And it's not even an some. argument. The best argument, like it's, it's like no one argues that Joey isn't the best seven of all time. Yeah, I know. I'm just I'm just scarred from last week. <laughs> <laughs> so it's just like even a guy like Joey could build on his game. You yeah, know, Katoa. It'll take time, but he'll build on his game. Um, what about Nicodemus? I was just about. Shit? I was just about to say. I don't know what it is, but like I get really. I don't know why, but I get really happy when I see him do well. Yep. I, I don't know what it is, but I just I really like him as a player, and I think he's he got, you know, he's been at a few clubs now, and he and he had a really good um, stint at the Warriors at one point. But yeah, I, I'm just I'm just loving seeing him set up tries for fun, which he's done in a couple games this year, and what he did in the first twenty minutes or twenty five well, minutes. Well, I think last it's night. because you know, a he's he's a little fella, so that battler mentality we always yeah. really like. But I think also there's been times where you've been almost felt a bit sorry for. Nicodema, because you've been, he's he's the curse of a utility. Mm. And sometimes you go, fuck, he's never really just been given a crack at a six or a seven jersey or whatever for a long period of time. For I know sure. we, at the Broncos it was for a bit. And so the fact that you go, he, he had the curse of a utility and then finally Wayne Bennett's just gone, you've got the six jersey. He's been outstanding from them all year. And so you go, like, with this opportunity he's been given, he's taken it with both hands. And, and maybe that's just what he needed over the last few years as a coach, just to go, mate, it's yours, take it. Absolutely. And there was like, there's a bit of, especially with Katoa not playing the first game, which obviously was a Wayne thing, but the, the there hasn't been like, with Soren O'Sullivan, Anthony Milford, Cody Nicarima, um, Isaiah Katoa, there's been uncertainty with the halves basically since day one. Mm. So yeah. it's it's good to see him really, really kill it. And I, I think as well, when he was coming through the 20s is when I was in high school and when 20s was just king back then and everyone loved it. And I remember back then just watching him absolutely destroy it for the Bronx. So I think that's another thing as well. Like it's, it's kind of like nostalgic a little bit, even though he's yep. not very old. But yep. um, yeah, it's great to see him playing well. I thought Herbie Farnworth was phenomenal. <laughs> Jeez. How does he get so many freaking meters from Santa every what, week? The dumbest thing I've ever said on the bloke podcast. <laughs> and... Uh, and I've said, as you listeners know, I've said some dumb shit. Like, oh, I've been so wrong on so like a lot of things. The dumbest shit I ever said was Herbie Farmworth wasn't a top tier. Could, wouldn't be a top tier center. That is the dumbest shit I've ever said. Like, I've always said really good center that is going to get through a bunch of work for you. He's going to, you know, always give you a seven and a half, eight out of ten. 
what a dumb, dumb thing to say because he, when he's on the field, ever since, pretty much ever since I said that, maybe he was listening to it and said, fuck this guy. <laughs> um, he has been, put it, every time he plays, he's in the top three centers of the round pretty much. Yeah. Like very rarely is Herbie Farnworth not a top three center form of the round in the last two years. Absolutely. I think when he put all the centers together in the NRL, I reckon there's like a big, a, not a big four, but like a, there's four that everyone kind of talks about and it's Crichton, Joe Manu, Val. And I think Herbie's part of that now. Yeah. Yeah. I'd say so. And, and like Val's not playing very well. So I'd have, I'd probably have Herbie at two or three at the moment. Obviously Critter number one. Well, isn't it like, I think Critter's, if Critter wasn't captain and you took leadership out and you just looked at what they did on the field, I think you'd have neck and neck Critter and, and Herbie. Herbie, yeah. Yeah, but I think it's the leadership yeah, true. That, that really springs Critter above everyone else right now. I mean, to be fair, Herbie was Dallium Center of the Year and was Critter Dallium last year? Let me check. Let, Let me check. check. I wonder, yeah, I wonder who won the other Dallium. I think it might have been Critter. But anyway, I know Herbie was one of the Dallium Centers of the Year, which was obviously um, deserved. So yeah, uh, Herbie Farmworth was outstanding. Max Psychoplath, I thought, once again, truly one of my like, favorite players to watch as as a young fella coming through like mm. an underdog that's he's not necessarily a known superstar yet but max psychoplath he's just got there's something about him yeah he's got there's something about him he's and got, he just oh, he's so well-rounded like yeah. he's got the mongrel he's got the motor he's got the toughness but his ball playing is fantastic it's so, only gonna get better so when wayne signed with south the first thing i did even though wayne doesn't normally do this but the first thing i did was check the dolphins roster to see who who we'd bring with him. Yeah. And, and the first guy I thought was, oh, I hope we can take Max Plath. Like, obviously, you know, no, I, no chance, but I'm, you know, just wishful thinking. But then I look and he's contracted to like 2029. Which says a lot. Which says so much. For a guy that's not a big superstar and barely played in a role. Most, a lot of people wouldn't have heard of him yeah. two months ago. Well, if you said Max Plath, they wouldn't know who yeah. he was. Yeah, well, exactly right. Um, Isn't that crazy? But like, he only did... Sorry, he might have had one game last year, but he played his second real yep. game this year and he's contracted for six or something years. Mate, and it's... Uh, man, I get it. I get it. Same. Uh, Critter won it last year as well. So it was Critter and Herbie last year. Yeah. So is Critter a two-time Dallium Centre of the yeah, Year? Yeah, because he won in 2020. Far out. I remember that 2020 year. Um, this never gets really spoke about, but he scored, I'm pretty sure, nine weeks in a row from yeah. centre. So good. Remember, remember how much like people... Well, not like, like I mean, a fair few people took the piss out of me when I was like, he can be a superstar yeah. at the dogs. And like, there was quite a few people that were like, what are you talking about? He barely talks. He doesn't have the personality. And I was like, I, I, was, I felt like I was taking crazy pills. I'm like, are you watching what I'm watching? Like, I feel like he absolutely has all the ingredients to be a superstar. And, and the way he's been playing this, this year, like, is he in like Reese Walsh? era of like superstar and obviously he's done more in the game than Reese Walsh I'm just talking about superstar yeah, chat yeah. Um, maybe not but I tell you what if he keeps this going I'm just I try to get up and I know Instagram followers isn't bloody you know the be all and end all mate he's got 203,000 followers on Instagram mm. like what, some of our biggest players in the game don't have that yeah 100% like it's and I, I know it's not the be all and end all but he, it's he a good is, barometer of like it's a pretty good, Yeah, it's a pretty good barometer. I'll just get it. Like, for example, Cam Munster, 184,000. There you go. Like, that that shows you that I, I think I think people don't really, I guess, appreciate how big Critter is mm. to almost like a quiet majority to a degree. Um, but this year, it's just gone to a whole new stratosphere. Like, this year, he's getting into the areas of, I think he... If everything continues the way it is, he'll probably win Dalian Captain of the Year. I'd be shocked if he doesn't. Yep. And he'll get he'll start getting into the the spot of a must pick for New South Wales. He'll be a big part of leading Samoa. You know, they're playing England at the end of the year, which is awesome. He'll become, you know, potentially he'll probably be their captain this year. Who who was their captain last was it Luai? Anyway, okay. yeah, find out who their captain was um in the World Cup. But if it's not if it wasn't Critter last year, I think he'll be their captain this year. So he'll have gone from a guy that people are a bit unsure. You know, when we spoke about who should be captain of the Bulldogs at the start of the year, you know, his name was kind of tossed up, but there was no firm like, oh, Crit has got to be the captain. He's gone from that at the start of the year to almost a lock as captain for Samoa. 
And also, he may not become captain of New South Wales initially, but at the very least, he'll be in the senior playing group, but also his name will be in the conversation um, for captain of New South Wales in the in the future, in my opinion. Yeah, I totally agree. Uh, Junior, Junior Bolo, Junior Bolo is the captain. So Critter will probably be the next captain of yeah. Samoa, you'd say. <laughs> what about Critter already is the top point scorer for Samoa ever? Jesus, that's crazy. <laughs> I, mean, um, I haven't played like a heap of games, but it's still, it's still wild. Yeah. He's 23 uh, years old. Now, on to the Sharkies. Look, I know really disappointing loss. So I get all that after such a good game last weekend. I'm not too worried yet with the Sharkies. Like, I don't have them as premiership threats yet, but I also have them definitely better than they were last year. I, th- I think that they are a much better side than last year, and I think that right now I still have them going a game deeper than they did last year in finals footy. Yep. Um, I agree. If they keep improving, who knows? But, like, disappointing loss. And, yeah, the first half was unacceptable. Like, just got completely blown off the park. Um, And they've got a much better roster than that. So, yes, for sure. They showed fight to get back into it. They show what they can do. So, it's just one of those – it's a bit of a – you know, I said this a couple of weeks ago. It's a tough month for the Sharkies. They've just got to ride it out. Um, because the rest of their season, their their draw isn't necessarily the hardest draw. If they can just ride this period out, keep their confidence, they're going to finish in the top four. They're going to get two shots at the uh, finals footy. And so if they can get to a prelim, I think that's a... I know Sharky's fans will be like, we want more than a friggin' prelim. But if they can get to a prelim, who knows what can happen from there? It's just yeah. one game and then you're in a GF, you know? So as long as they finish in the top four and they can go one game deeper, I'd be relatively happy as a Sharkies fan this year. Yeah, especially if, just as long as they win that, I know we're talking to the future now, but get that week off, get into a prelim, because they were so damn close to that prelim in 2022. They were Valholm's field goal away. They could have beaten, like, think about it. They could have beaten Para in the prelim, and they could have played Penrith in GF. Like, that's... Yeah, the year before, yeah, in yeah, 2022, sure. 2022. And the Roosters game, I know that it was their, their game to win, and they, they stuffed it. But they were close. It was mm. very close. So, as I said, I, I, as long as they finish in the top four, if yeah. they start slipping a lot and yeah. we find them at like seventh or eighth by the end of the year, yeah. that's when I'm going to be like, okay, the Sharkies have just, yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not saying, sorry, I'm not saying that they would have beaten Parramatta in 2022. I'm just saying like how close it is to be so different. Yeah. Oh, for sure. Yeah. One point. Yeah, seriously. Um, um, I, the thing about I love the, the, the I, I didn't mind is – Obviously, they got blown off the park against Penrith, which which wasn't great. But they did get blown off the park again last night in the first 25, which isn't good. But at least they somehow fought their way back. I know they ended up winning the game, but there was some positives to take out of what was could have been really, really disastrous. Well, I actually... Um, so they said on the, the call, Sharks have a minus 40 average in the first half and a plus 110 second half. Oh, really? So wow. I don't know... Yeah, that must be total. That must be total, I'd, I'd assume, anyway. Yeah. Um, and so it's interesting because I think Craig Fitzgibbon, he would have come through the era. I remember uh, Minicello telling a story of how um, they had gotten close to the grand final the year before and then they went into training for the next preseason. Might have been 2013. Oh, so maybe Craig Fitzgibbon wasn't there. It might have been um, or early 2000s because they – so Mini – Played in the 02 grand final on the wing. But he played, oh, did he play 13? Or no, I mean, he didn't play 13. Yeah, I mean, he played 13. He did play, but it was his, was his last year? That was his last, no, it was his second last second year. Second last year. So maybe it was early 2000s. Um, and basically, they came in and said, look, we are going to be a second half side. Actually, you know what? I think this is Trent Robinson that said this. So this would have been 13. Okay, would have been. Okay, so like the connection's wrong. Because I was thinking maybe that's what Fitzgibbon's coaching method is is like we're a second half side like mm. we finish games off well to be fair fitzgibbon even though he might not have been there in 13 he was on robertson's coaching staff for ages yeah true very true yeah well there, there's your, there's your yeah. point there so maybe that's why that's what he maybe needs to tweak a little bit is like it's great to be a second half side mm. but this first half at least needs to be just a little bit better so that you can catch him by the second half yeah and i think if they just work on that their bench is mad like when royce hunt come on yeah, last night playing good he, he was awesome so if they and can then just look, even Penrith, that first year of dominance, they they had this kind of mantra of they have to win the first 20 minutes. Mm. But the first year in 2020, I think it was. And they got so close and just lost the grand final and they completely changed their mantra for the second 
the second. So they were almost all about attack in that first year. They changed it to being all about defence and almost being a second half side in 2021. And look what's look happened what happen. since then. They haven't lost since then. Um, yeah, pretty. Yeah, exactly. It's crazy to think that they haven't lost a grand final. Like they've been premiers. They've been premiers for three years. It's crazy to think that. Every year that I've been here, Penrith have won the comp. That's insane. <laughs> All righty, last show before the Origin team drops. Final cause, what's the mix smart choice? Who replaces Sua Lee? Um, you know, I've said this, and it can't be any clearer. I mean, I've seen a few comments of people saying, oh, you don't want us to pick Latrell. <laughs> like, I can't be clearer, guys. This is exact. All I want is Michael Maguire to sit down with Trell, and if Trell is fully frothing to get in there, he is the only choice you have. If Latrell is frothing to get in there, you have to select him. Mm. I cannot express that any clearer. That is not me saying you shouldn't pick Trell. That's me saying you have to pick him if he's all in. Yeah. Whereas if he says, like, no, I want to focus on club or I'm a bit, there's a lot going on in my life, that's when you go, okay, if there's a lot going on and you're not really feeling it right now, let's revisit this next year. Yep. But by all reports, it seems like Trell's all in. Yeah. So you can't, if Trell's all in, you cannot select anyone else. I hope that is clear for people. (laughs) <laughs> I, I just the amount of comments i've seen people saying oh you just you're trying to convince us not to pick trell i'm like what <laughs> some of the comments make me laugh like how um and i know most people are joking in this one but like people are like saying oh you're just trying to get new south Wales to pick <laughs> that's so good i can't be clearer guys if madge speaks to trell and trell is frothing to get in there you have to select him he puts mm. fear in queensland's um the camp of queensland he is, out of all the players that you have right now, no one has done what Latrell has done in Origin. Teddy, obviously, well, not obviously, but I don't think Teddy will get selected for game two. So Latrell is really the only player you have in your side that has experience in the Origin arena of dominating Queensland. No one else, like, who else in, the, in your side individually? Now, obviously, there have been players that have beaten Queensland, but who else in the New South Wales Blues side right now has individually completely dominated Queensland. Mm, yeah, no one. Like, no one. No one. Um, yep. You could look at Toto, but I would argue Toto has played incredibly well, but he hasn't necessarily won Origins with big plays and, you know, all that kind of stuff, even though he's been incredible. Yeah, Toto's getting Brad Fittler medals even when we're losing. Like, he he's consistent every week. Whereas but Latrell... Latrell can win your series. Yes, yes. Um, and so, but outside of that, like, Critter's been solid. Luai's been um, solid. But no one's really reached the heights of Latrell Mitchell. Like I, I mean, the, him and Tommy, uh, and Tommy's obviously injured, yeah. are probably the only two that have done that, that have at done the that. moment. Yeah. Like, go back and watch Latrell's first series versus Will Chambers. Oh, it's the best. And, like, Tommy, you know, the only other player that's done something like that is probably Tom Trevojevic, where they've just completely dominated the Queenslanders. Mm. And obviously, Teddy, when, you know, early, those two first ones. Oh, Teddy, incredible. Teddy as well, yeah. Um, so you just got to have him in, as I said. But if there is a bit of like, look, you know, Madge, you know, if you need me, I'm here, but I, I might, you know, I'm really focused on club and I owe it to the club to do this and do that. That's when I go, park it, let's revisit, stay in contact with Troll. Revisit this next year. That's when I think that you need to look at potentially Burton. You need to look at maybe Bradman Best, Katoni Staggs, Jesse Ramian. My personal choice would be if Latrell isn't available, that's when you probably, in my opinion, you go Burton. Um, what about yourself? Who are you going? I'm going Latrell. I, I think it's just time. Yeah, Latrell hasn't played Origin for so long. Like mm. I, I think it's just it's time. Tonight's, look, unless he has an absolute stinker tonight, which he won't, uh, I think Latrell is in. I, if Latrell, for whatever reason, doesn't get picked, I think that seeing Critter on the right last week was good. I think they should have done that in the in the in the first Absolutely. game. Absolutely, got to yeah. have Critter on the right. You yep. cannot have it like it should be Lomax and Critter. Yeah, Boom. and I think Ramian. I would like to see him there. Mm. But I just, I just don't think so. It was good last night. The, moment, the game was on the line. He was great, great last yeah. night. He was fantastic last night. Um, I'd love to see him there one day. I think he's an Origin player. Like he's, him in contact in defence is outrageous. Yeah. Um, but because of the whole thing, Crichton on the right, obviously Raymond's a right side player. Then it comes down to Burton and Best. Wouldn't mind either. I'd probably go Burton to be fair, yeah. just for his, just for his kick. Then you can then have you can cover as well. You can cover as well. Then you can pick a different utility on the bench. Um, 
But yeah, I'm going Latrell. I'm Burton's in my 17, but 100. percent Yeah, I think you've got to have a utility on the yeah. bench. I wonder if he puts a utility on the bench. Is that him admitting that he should have had a utility? Yep. Is that a good thing? But I think I, I I'd rather that than him be stubborn. Mm. Like, you yeah. know what I mean? Oh, for sure. Yeah. But I guess it, you know, there's been like kind of vague chats around like what did Madge get right, what did he get wrong. I think that if if he does put a utility on the bench, it's a definitive, I should have had a utility game one. Mm. Unless his argument is, I'm going to play game two differently to I've played game one. Yeah. Um, you know, anyone's listening to the podcast, you guys know we've always been quite strong on having a utility Absolutely. on that bench. And, and I did feel like, you know, as we've said quite a few times now, but you just didn't need that extra forward. Like, you know, Ola Kawatu played really well. Hudson Young, he came on, did his job through no fault of his own. I just, it's more just... You don't need that many forwards on the bench with the current playing roster that you've got. Exactly. In my opinion. Yeah. Um, totally which I feel agreed. sorry for Hudson Young. Like he has, like he hasn't really been given that much of an opportunity in Oregon. And, and he's an origin. He'll be an origin. He'll player. be back for yeah, sure. Yeah. For sure. Um, geez, I thought Olakowatu was so good when he came on. He was fantastic. Him and Lenny off the bench. Yeah. Was mad. I, I, I got to say, I, I really. There's a clip of Spencer Lenny who's talking about, you know, he had someone tell him that he didn't deserve to be in that mm. side, and he was like, look, probably not. Um, but you know who did deserve it is my family. Yeah, and I was like, "Geez, that's that is a great, a really great insight." Because I, if I'm being honest, I felt he had only played two games. I felt like he probably hadn't earned the mm. right to be in that side yet. Now, <laughs> don't get me wrong, <laughs> the way he performed, he earned the right. Yeah. Like he has that jersey now. He was your pretty much your best player. Like outside of maybe Robson, I, I felt that he was outstanding for you guys. So he's earned the jersey now. But I thought it was a really good insight. Um, I, you know, I, I'll be honest, like when that whole situation happened at the start of the year, like it, it definitely, it hurt because I really like Ezra and I, he's mm. such a good young man. Um, but at the same time, you know, we all make mistakes and people deserve second chances. And so I actually, I didn't think he didn't deserve it because what happened at the start of the year. I felt he didn't, he hadn't earned it yet just because he hadn't played, two, he'd only played two games. I'm, I'm a big believer that once you serve your time, you should be getting. You should get a fresh start. Yep. Um, and and in that case, and to see Spencer Lenu speak like that, first of all, I felt a little bit sorry for him that he felt that he didn't deserve it. Yeah. Or maybe I was like, "Fuck, that sucks." Um, even though I had that opinion, but then for him to say my family deserved it, um, I really respected that. I liked that. I felt like that's a really great insight, and that is who you're playing for. Mm. You know, the the name on your back. You know, being from New South Wales, being from the area that you're from. Um, and when we talk about origin-made players, he is an origin-made player. He was outstanding, yeah. outstanding. It is a great insight because someone like me who's never even gotten close to professional sport, like, I just wouldn't have thought of that. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, and you're right. For him to, for him to say um, the first thing he said, which was, did I deserve it? No. That When you see kind of that, like, humility in mm. someone – I can't, I kind of respect it. Well, yeah, you connect to it, and, yeah. and you go like, you know, he's not getting defensive. He's not being offended that someone said yeah. that to him. He's gone, oh, mate, maybe I didn't, maybe I didn't, yeah. but my family did. And the family thing that just hit. Yeah, so heart. really great insight. And um, as I said, like, I'm a big believer on once you serve your punishment, you should be. And rugby league is a game of second chances. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, watching him kill it, like, good on him, bloody good on him. And yeah. I think he's going to be a friggin' Put it this way. Look how dominant the Roosters... I know they've been a bit quiet last couple of weeks, but look how dominant they've been. He hasn't been playing for them. Mm. Imagine what he's going to do for the rest of the season with this confidence at the Roosters coming off the bench. Oh, yeah. Especially now, that, like, especially because he's played, so well, played right. so well in game one. That Queensland forward pack is unbelievable. Like, the, yeah. all they are is defence. Like, yeah. they live and breathe defence. They couldn't touch him. Mm. They could, like, every time he got the ball, he, it's like he had spiders on him. Yeah. He um, was so good. He was Jeez. so good. Yeah. So really, yeah, like good on him. Like I, I, as I said, I, I really respect that. I guess the deep insight that he kind of gave and the honesty. Um, and you know, everything that happened, it happened. But I think that I hope fans give him a fair crack for the rest of his career. Um, because as I said, once the punishment is done, if you keep punishing him, then yeah, well, like what's the point of the first punishment? Yeah. You know. Um, so yeah, he was incredible. I think that he's locked in on the bench for sure. I was amazed when you look at the night nut minutes that he only had twenty nine minutes or oh, whatever. Crazy, eh? it felt like he was on there for friggin' an hour. Yeah, so true. He was so dominant. Um, 
Okay, so he'll be definitely on the bench. I think Olakawatu, I think he keeps his spot for sure. I think Burton goes to 14. Do you carry a back on the bench? Yes. Oh, sorry, a back on the bench? Yep. Uh, no, not with Burton. If Burton's at 14. Okay. So Sorry, I would have Burton at 14 and three, and I'd have Yo, Olakawatu, and Lenu. Okay. Yep. So your bench, so you wouldn't start Yo, you'd keep Jake Trevojevic as a starting front, front row? <sighs> so hard because he got named captain. Yeah. Oh, sorry. I forgot that Cam Murray's might be back. Cam Murray's going straight into the start. Cam Murray's 13. So you're going to have to lose someone on that bench and in the front Look, row. you have to lose either Jake, McInnes, or Yo because I just reckon two of them two of them are like straight up and down, two of them are good. You can't use Lo- – I know I, – I oh, no, thought Yo was great. I'm not, I'm not, sorry, I'm not at all suggesting to drop Yo. I'm just saying yeah. that this is, they're the similar type of players. One of them probably has to make way. Do you put McInnes at 14 and Burton unfortunate again? I think we still have the same problems because then if <laughs> – I was about to say if someone gets sent off. If we lose a – I open if, that can of worms yeah, again, no, 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 mate. No. Holy um, shit. Yeah, no, nah, if we lose a centre, we're still we're in trouble. So I'd have Burton. I'd – jeez. I'd, I'd drop Jake. If, if Jake wasn't captain, I'd drop him, unfortunately. Yeah. But just because he, just because he's captain, that just changes so much. And you guys had such a great point last week about how – the Blues played in a way that I'm proud of, and that probably has a lot to do with Jake. Mm. So, if it's just on football, I'd I'd probably drop Jake, but I'm not I'm not going to. He's the captain, he's the leader, so he's in. I'm not dropping Yo. God, it, t- it pains me to say this, but maybe I'm dropping McInnes. Oh. But I but oh, geez, I haven't really thought about this. This is it's tough. Someone's got to make way because McInnes was his opening stint was great. I thought he was fantastic. Mm. Do you put uh, Murray at 14? I mean, it's similar it's to similar. the being yeah. 14. Jeez, I'm glad I'm not making the decision. See, if you put Burton at centre, obviously the child will be centre. But if he wasn't, you put yeah. him at centre, then you can afford to put For sure. McInnes at 14. Yeah. God, it's tough. It's a tough one. It's a tough so one. Just on, just, as I said, just on footballing, I'd probably have McInnes and Yo. And Yo's not getting dropped. And Jake's the captain. So just... By order of elimination, which I oh, it makes me sick saying that. I want, I want McInnes in the team. Yeah, I don't know. It's gonna be it's gonna be very interesting. Far oh, out. It's a tough one. It's a tough one. Um, okay, uh, who will be halfback? Here's another thing that was a, yeah. a lack of people were saying that I was trying to put Hines in there. Okay, so just to be clear, guys, what I was saying was, if Michael Maguire had Hines as his number one pick at seven, because clear he's out, then I think he deserves another chance. Because that's what Michael Maguire selected. If Michael Maguire had Moses as his number one pick, then I think Moses should be brought back in, yep. uh, brought into the, to the side. Me personally, we actually didn't have Hines after the Pendrith game. We didn't have Hines in our starting side. We had Luai Burton. Mm. Um, Luai at seven, Burton at six initially because Moses was out. So, so my personal opinion is, is what I just said. Me personally, what I would do is I would be bringing Mitchell Moses in. Uh, for seven, yeah, Luai would be my six. Yeah, that that makes total sense. I agree. I think I would pick Moses. It's it's such it's such a tough one with Hines because what's what's going to be worse if he gets dropped and his confidence is a bit down, or do you give him another chance? And if he kills it, then fantastic. He's killed it in a good game. Monkey off the back. Well, that's why I think but, it all just depends on was he your guy? Yeah, to start the series, but then. God, if he, if he has a, a bad, not even a bad game. Like, he missed a kick last night. People were in the room, which is the most unfair thing ever, right? Oh, I felt so sorry. And, and, and if he, if, unless he has a 10 out of 10 performance in game two, people are going to hammer him again. Mm. I think it's so unfair. I think I would just love to see, put in Moses, and then hopefully, like, just hope and pray. Like, let him focus on Sharks. Just for this, like for this year, focus on Sharks. Well, clearly, he's going to be the halfback next year anyway, so it's mm. going to be a whole different conversation. And then let's let's see how deep he can get him to the finals. Because you know, Luai is looking like he's going to keep that six jersey, and maybe he keeps it next year as well. I'm not sure. Yeah. But Hines, I actually think at Clubland, you know, he's a seven for sure at Clubland. Like, but if you took him to some of those top tier teams with heaps of depth in position, there's an argument that he's more of a six. You know, the, the way he plays. So there, there is an argument that maybe in origin he becomes a six or Moses or whatever. The, the key for me is, is like, and like, 
Look, I don't know if it's just a New South Wales thing. Maybe maybe we're just as guilty as Queenslanders, so I'm not going to... I don't know. But, like, just because he wasn't the best in his first couple games, or let's just say his first game, because I, I don't count that first one where he no. came up for 10 minutes center. Just because he was just solid in the first game doesn't mean that he can't go back and work on his game yep. and be good in a few years. Now, I don't know whether he will. He might not. He may not improve. But here's, here's some, like, I guess, history with Origin for you. DCE got dropped in 2015. Didn't get picked in 2018 when he could have been the starting half. Ben Hunt did yep. for, for Queensland. Due to injury, he got called in in game three for 2018. They lost that series. He gets selected for the side in 2019. They lost that series. They won the incredible series of 2020. He was amazing. They then, 2021, got beaten by a record margin. So in the first four years of DCE's starting seven origin career, mm. he was one from four. There you go. Not only that, when this happened, he was older than what Cleary is right now. <laughs> so Cleary, uh, sorry, not yeah. Cleary, sorry. Uh, Hines, Hines is yeah. right now. So Hines is 27. DC was around 27, 28, going to 31 or whatever, because mm. he's 35 now. Um, so to suggest that Hines can't work on his game to become a good origin player, it's just not true. Yeah, it's nonsense. Like it, you give him an opportunity, keep him around, you know, keep him around the origin squads, keep him positive, keep him happy, keep him in communication with him, even if you aren't going to select him. And this is coming from a guy that would select Moses at the moment. Doesn't mean that Hines can't grow into a great origin player. Look at Mitchell Moses. If you had a, if you Perfect had a, example. literally, honestly, and, and this is coming from someone that like, we talk Mitchell Moses that we love him. I love him as a player. I think he's great. If you had to mention his name for origin selection three or four years ago, you would have been laughed out of the room. To me, and this is coming from a place of bias, I will admit that, because I wanted Reynolds in the team. In, mm. I think it was, what year did Moses debut? It might have been 2021. Maybe mm. it was 2020. 2021, the record thing, he debuted in game three, I think. Yeah, so that one. Um, when he got picked, I was like, are you kidding me? Mm. Like, surely, because clearly it was out. I'm like, surely Adam Reynolds, like, Moses isn't built for origin. Mm. He had a... He had two tries and he played pretty good. I think he broke his back or something. But you know what's again. crazy though? He got annihilated for that. Like the exactly. comments were like, he's shit, he's yeah. this, he's that. Um, because Queensland won yeah. game three. But yeah, exactly. And now, like last year, he had a good series even though we lost. Now he's a must select. He's a must select. <laughs> yeah. And so, and this is from a guy that, so like it's just how unfairly we, we have a go at these blokes. Yeah. Like, I'm not saying, oh, I would never laugh anyone out of the room if they said Mitch Moses a few years ago. I would have said he's not my choice. Yeah. But, like, he's a guy that's in his, what, his eighth year of first grade, ninth year of first grade, and he's built his game to be ready for origin. Yeah. And, and, like, you know, some people may have Hines over Moses, but I think most people are like, I think Moses is ready for origin. Yeah. It takes time, guys. Like, for sure. It, it, you know, look at Nathan Cleary. He's basic. he's almost, if he stays injury free, he's almost guaranteed to be a GOAT. Like yeah. almost guaranteed to be. Even he is taking time to make an impact in Origin. Yeah. So, yeah, I think just, I, I'm, as I said, I would bring Moses in, but don't just say Hines is, is not an Origin player and he never will be. Give him an opportunity to work on his game. To be, He's 27 years old. Imagine what Hines is going to be when he turns 30. Yeah, exactly right. Like imagine how good he's going to be, in my opinion, when he works more in his game, his kicking game, his defence, everything. Everything. So I just think, give him a chance. As in, when I say give him a chance, is that don't just throw him out to the wolves and say you're never coming back. Like let him grow his game, let him develop, let him learn to be a better player, let him lead a team into a final series, let, win a final series game. You know all those little things that you learn that Mitchell Moses has learned over the last three or four years. Mm. Um, it's it is history suggests in most cases, halves need a bit of time to be ready for Origin. Like 100%. DCE won a premiership in his first year. They, yeah. And he still wasn't ready yeah, to lead an Origin team around. Exactly. And then the example I used before, Andrew Johns' third, first winning game in Origin at halfback was in 1998. He debuted in like 93 or something. So That's Andrew Johns. You've got to give him time. Yeah. Give him time. And that's not me saying, and to be clear, I'm not saying you should select him. I'm saying the opposite. Yeah. I'm saying go with Mitchell Moses because he's ready. In yep. my opinion, I don't know if Hines, I don't think Heinz is ready just yet. Doesn't mean he can't be ready in a few years' For time. Sure. Doesn't mean in, in 24 months' time. Like Cody Walker didn't debut till he was 26. <laughs> exactly. Cody Walker, he's debuting that wasn't that good. Mm. Then he came back in game three last year, killed, killed it. it. Um, 
So I would, my personal opinion, I would be going Mitchell Moses and Jerome Lewis in the halves for game two. Yeah, same, yep. same for sure. Same. Yep. Um, geez, I felt sorry for Nico. I, I know you know oh. he's a leader. I know he's paid the big bucks. Um, it's still a tough kick from the sideline on your bad side. Like I get it. Those are the big plays you hope that, can, that, yeah. that your leader can make. He didn't make it, um, but you just knew that as soon as he missed that, everyone's going to be into him. But yeah. it's like, mate, it's a tough kick. It's a tough. It's the kick. hardest possible. Ugh. Literally the yeah. hardest. Yeah. Bad side, on the sideline. Yeah. Um, I thought, yeah. As soon as it missed, I was like, he's getting hammered in the comments section. Yeah, and he, and he did. And which he is, did. He got absolutely yeah. hammered. Like, you know, yeah. Anyway, it is what it is. I, look, he's a superstar. This is, I guess, the the territory yeah. that it becomes with the superstar is that. You're going to get people that critique you unfairly, too harshly, um, sometimes fairly, sometimes fairly as well. But, yeah, I thought the oh, – I knew he was going to get smashed in the comment section. Okay. Um, all righty. We've been going for ages today. Let's uh, – yeah. okay, LDVT60 has 160 kilowatts of grunt, which makes it one of the most powerful utes in this class. Auto from 38990 for ABN holders. Seven years, so that's 200,000 kilometer warranty. Whichever occurs first, at that price, why go secondhand when you can have a brand new LDV? Also, use code CLIMAX for free delivery. This week, we've already used the code LOMAX, so the code is CLIMAX for free delivery. Mitch Barnett resigns with the WAS. Great resigning. What a – Oh, what a turnaround for his career! Yeah, seriously, because when he was at the the Knights, because didn't he get he got sent off or something in a game, and everyone's kind of like, oh, okay, this is one too many. He's becoming one of the premier forwards in the NRL. So consistent and so oh, I just love that he plays b- both in the middle and on the edge. Like he just switches it up mid game. Yeah, he's so valuable to the Warriors, and God, he'd be valuable for the Blues like one day. So. Jeez, oh, I hate to harp on about it, but someone like that on the bench would be bloody awesome. Yeah. Someone who can play middle and edge. Well, I like his explosiveness through the middle. I think if let's say you don't win game two, I think you'll see him in game three. Yeah, I think, I think so. you'll probably they'll probably look at that forward pack if if you don't win game two. Now you maybe you maybe you will. They'll probably look at that forward pack and go, you know what? Maybe we were an explosive middle short. Yes. For this game, but. That's if you lose game two. Who, who knows what happens there? Um, but great re-signing and, you know, the Warriors. I don't know. I've got a feeling about this weekend. I reckon they're going to be in for a big one. Mm. Um, algorithm check. We already did it with, obviously, the song at the start of the thing. Yep. What's your algorithm check going on? Oh, mate, I'm darts at the moment. Darts? Yeah. Uh, so I've gotten this Luke Lidler, who's the 17-year-old kid from England who mm. just kills it. Uh, he did a nine darter a few weeks ago. And then I, have some, I, got, I got sent it and I've just been on this on this darts thing at the moment. It's, yeah, it's cool. I, I want to go to it when it comes to Australia. Really? Oh, it looks it's so like much fun. It's like a party, fun. eh? Yeah, it looks so much fun. Uh, all right, Kay has got you covered this footy season with every game, every round live and ad break free during play. Some key games this weekend include Raiders, Cowboys, Eels, Roosters and Manly V Dragons, which are exclusive to Fox League and available on KO, but you can watch all games live and ad free during play on KO. Um, all right, we've already been through all the tips and everything. All right, that's yep. us done and dusted. Pack her up, boys, done and dusted. Make sure to grab a case of Blog Beer, the most easy, beautiful drink and lager. It's beer for blokes that turn up. Oh, also, don't forget, guys, early September, something big's coming. Something big's coming. Cannot wait. I cannot wait. I've been working so hard on this for so long. Uh, go to bloke.shop. We've got bloke hoodies there. Grab one before they all go. Uh, and as usual, I'll go and fuck myself. Thank you. What's gambling really costing you? For free and confidential support, call the number on the screen or visit the website.